On this week's Silver Screen Report, juniors and seniors explore their college options, a special guest speaker visits the Beta Club, and we take you behind the scenes for the theater department's first show of the year. Good afternoon, Dutch Fork. Today is Friday, October 27th, and your Silver Screen Report starts now. Representatives of colleges filled the big gym earlier this week to inform the upperclassmen of college choices. Colleges fill the gym hoping to inspire students to join their school. Uh, it gives me a chance to talk to the colleges I'm thinking about. Like, I'm in there right now. I'm going to go talk to the Clemson uh, representative and the USC representative, maybe the Citadel. The College Board helps me look at more smaller independent colleges that I wouldn't have even thought of, and it gives me more choices. It's really easy to kind of go around and look at different colleges, especially in different states. Like there's one from Alabama, there's one from Georgia. So you kind of have a wide range of options. Time for you to ask questions. Just ask us anything you want to ask us. We're here to answer all of your questions. Students have a lot to consider in making choices of where they will attend school. I look at what they accept for PSAT scores and ASAT scores and how students are treated. Uh, I look for my major which is computer science and I look for location. Students say they're excited about their futures outside of high school. Um, to find a sense of independency, so to figure out how to live, you know, without constant support. Um, I'm looking forward to meeting new people, new friends, um, the college life. This has been Kylie Fine with your Silver Screen Report. The SAT word of the week is matriculate, a verb meaning to admit or to be admitted into a group, especially a college or university. In keeping with the collegiate theme, the Media Center was packed last Thursday with seniors filling out college applications. Bailey Hunter was there. Last week, college representatives circled the Media Center aiding seniors for College Application Day, a day where students can fill out free college applications for a select number of colleges with the assistance of representatives from colleges across South Carolina. Well, I think College Application Day provides that opportunity and access. It, you know, it, it becomes a focused kind of day that everyone can come together on a common goal of having students to at least complete one application. It allows students to get out there and interact with people that are from the colleges that come to the school and it just cuts out one less factor of being a senior. College Application Day helps seniors in many ways. I think it's important for the seniors just because you can apply to any of the colleges for free and I mean why wouldn't you do that because it's free and you don't have to spend any of your money. I do know that um, education beyond high school is important. When we look at um, jobs and opportunities for people, um, the workforce is looking for skilled people, whether, again, whether it's a two-year technical degree or it's a, a four-year degree. Um, the opportunities to have the lifestyle that you want to have and to contribute to society. And the only way I think sometimes that can happen is if you do prepare yourself beyond high school. There are numerous ways to prepare yourself for success with college. For the underclassmen, I feel like you should definitely explore what you're interested. Like, I took this one class at the Kate Center and I absolutely hated it, um, but I'm glad I took it just because I know that that's not what I want to do when I grow up. Apply to college as early as you can because the earlier you apply, the faster you'll be you know, looked at for scholarships and grants and whatnot. And just be proactive, like go to your guidance counselor and even if they say like, they're in a meeting or whatnot, just show them that you, that you, like you want to graduate and you, know, you want to go to college or whatnot, that you have a goal after high school. Take your time. You know, find that one place that you know, is going to work for you, um, not only academically, but also in the social, um, where you're going to feel comfortable. And, that, and, and if you do that, I feel then you'll be successful. You know, you'll get through it in four years and be happy about it. This has been Bailey Hunter with your Silver Screen Report. For this week's Kids in the Hall, we asked students about the importance of a higher education. The importance of studying in a, in a college is to 
make it, make sure you get a good job. The purpose of a higher education is you know, to get you into college and then throughout college you do better in life and be more successful and that improves you, you know, to go on in your life and do better and have a better, you know, overall life, you know. The importance of a higher education is to you will be able to get a good job in the future, maybe even become the CEO of your own company. The importance of a higher education is it'll get you very far, you know, it won't just get you stuck at, you know, one job. You can be, get promoted to many jobs and, and you can leave to go to college, like, and you have the freedom to define who you are as a person. The Media Center was also the place to be last Thursday as Beta Club members welcomed a special guest speaker after school. Here's India Wright with more. I didn't feel like I was doing enough. More than 100 Beta Club members listened attentively as Mayor Terrence Colbreth prepared to give them a speech. So today in the Beta Club meeting we had a special guest speaker. His name is Terrence Colbreth and he's the mayor of Johnston, South Carolina. And he basically gave us a speech about how we can be leaders nowadays as students and like how we can inspire other people to do great things in their community. Today we talked about untraditional leadership. I told some of the, um, I should say Beta Club members, about my trials, tribulations, and successes. We had the mayor from Johnston come talk to us today, which was actually pretty interesting, um, seeing as it was my first Beta Club meeting, that's not what I was expecting at all, and I definitely wasn't expecting this many people to be here. Mayor Cobra's advice on leadership will have a lasting impact on the Beta Club members. A lot of times I think as young people, sometimes you, you're worried about the clock. You think you're running out of time, like, oh my God, I should have did this when I was 20, now I'm getting 21, first you're starting out 16. You have a lot more time than you think, but don't waste it. You could definitely tell that a lot of them were really paying attention when he spoke about being a leader and the qualities that you need to have in order to gain that and to become that type of person. It's pretty cool. I think a lot of them were really just kind of really needing to hear that. Community service provides students a learning opportunity in the process of becoming a successful leader. I think it will inspire students to like help tell others to be good people in their community and they'll like want to do more things in their community. And it puts you together with peers, it puts you together with classmates, and then also it puts you together with strangers. And through that, you guys can work out something and accomplish some stuff. This has been India Wright with the Silver Screen Report. The Valentine Sonic hosted yet another fundraiser last week as visual arts students and supporters worked to raise money for their 2018 trip to Europe. Students worked for tips and donations at Sonic for the visual arts fundraiser. They find that this helps ease the strain of funding for the trip. It gives us more opportunities to raise more money. It can be really beneficial for students that want to go and they don't personally have enough money to pay for their trip. They're taking actions for things that they're going to be doing over the summer and stepping up to the plate and making some big bucks. Students say that the trip helps to grow worldly knowledge and build friendships. The trip helps students because it exposes them to different cultures and different countries and where they can learn things that they couldn't necessarily learn just staying in the United States. It's such a life-changing and magical experience to be with like-minded students in a new setting, seeing new things, and for anyone that could help uh, with us going and doing that and giving these students that experience, that's really awesome. So we're hoping for big bucks tonight. The visual arts teachers will be announcing another fundraiser to be held at Eggs Up Grill sometime next year. This has been Todd Whittington with your Silver Screen Report. The theater department prepares for its first show of the school year, which debuts tonight. Katie Rojas has the story. For the past couple months, drama production participants have been preparing for their upcoming show, Radium Girls. Radium Girls is about um, these girls in the 1920s who, when they first discovered radioactive um, stuff would glow, they started to make, uh, they would paint watches um, for the soldiers who were going off to World War I. Um, and they didn't know that it was dangerous. They didn't know that it was going to hurt you. And the girls would point the brushes on their lips over and over again, and their faces started melting off, and they, they got very, very sick. Um, and it was sort of the fallout from that. There is more to the preparation process that meets the eye. One of the things that you have to do before you start actually uh, making makeup concepts is to actually uh, do some research on the symptoms of radium as well as um, the style of the 1920s. Really practicing lines and practicing blocking, um, making sure that 
you're going at the right times. Practice lines, as you can see over there, we practice lines all the time. Even if they're not part of the scene, we work together to make sure it's going to come out great. Theater allows many students to come together and bond as a group. It's super fun and if you're stressed about something, it helps you just not think about it. I've always loved the idea of portraying someone that I'm not. I've been in the theater for a really long time, uh, since I was like a little baby. And um, it's just really fun and you get, you get to make a lot of relationships with um, the people like in the show and like outside of the show. I decided to be a part of the show because one, not only is the uh, background as well as the actual play itself interesting to me, but also because I'm not going to give up an opportunity to be in another play. The drama student's excitement for the show is no secret. I think the thing that I'm most excited about is uh, how, how the students are going to um, um, feel on opening night. We do all this work and we put all this time in, but then at the very end of it, it, it it's worth it. How well we're going to be able to put it together, it's going to reach look really cool with all the makeup and the lighting. I'm kind of sad that it's coming to an end. The rehearsals are always so fun and um, just being with the people who do the shows, um, there's never really a dull moment. Radium Girls will air tonight and tomorrow night at 7 p.m. and Sunday afternoon at 3 p.m. Tickets are $5 for students and $10 for adults. Dutch Park faculty and staff can get in for free. This has been Katie Rojas with your Silver Screen Report. Last Friday, the Dutch Fork varsity football team defeated Spring Valley 34-19. The first quarter ended with a score of 10-13, with the Vikings trailing closely behind the Foxes. This theme would continue throughout the game with the second quarter ending with the Foxes only one point ahead. Dutch Fork kicked off the third quarter and played a strong game, ending the quarter ahead by eight points. The final quarter was no different, with the Dutch Fork continuing to lead and the gap getting larger. Tonight, Dutch Fork will take on the Irmo Yellow Jackets. The game begins at Irmo at 7.30. Now here's Mia with some announcements. Thanks, Maddie. Girls basketball tryouts will begin next Monday and will end Wednesday. See Coach Norris in the gym area, Coach Crumlin in room 241, or Coach Goldston in the study hall room for more information. Boys varsity basketball tryouts will also begin next Monday and will continue Tuesday. JV boys basketball tryouts will be next Tuesday and Wednesday. You must have your physical on the Planet High School website. Now here's Maddie with more. Thanks Mia. Scholastic is sponsoring a student poetry contest with a $500 first place prize. The deadline for your original 2 to 20 line poem is November 8th. Poems may be submitted to your English teacher or the media center. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.